Fellas, have you ever really sat there and just kind of thought to yourself, hey, you know what? Dating is just really a legalized form of prostitution. You have to go put forth the effort. You are at the whims of her schedule or his schedule, depending upon how you float. And then you sit there and you have to spend money if you ultimately want that release. How is that any different than just going and getting a hooker? Oh, you give yourself the illusion of romance and all this other stupid crap. But at the end of the day, it's all just hooking. It's just a legalized version of prostitution, period. Like sugar daddy, sugar baby shit. Bitch, you're a whore. And it's okay. Don't get all caught up in your feelings because you're messing with the dude just because of his money. Or she's a gold digger or this or that. You're just a call girl. You go where the money calls you. Now, surely a lot of you at this point in time are like, wait, I thought I clicked on a raw review. What's the point of him talking about this? Exactly. There was absolutely no point in talking about that. And it so perfectly matches this week's raw episode. Perfectly matches it. This is a go-home show before Extreme Rules, and so much of what happened on it made you say to yourself, what's the damn point here? I get you've got a winner-take-all mixed tag match at the upcoming pay-per-view, but what the hell was the point of trotting out there Seth and Becky in their awkward-ass-looking relationship trying to smother in everybody's face, reeking of Vince doesn't like the thought of these two together, so he's going to try and troll them every step of the damn way to face Andrade and Zelina Vega so that way Becky can beat Zelina Vega so that way Zelina Vega is eliminated, but then Becky can't wrestle because you can't have the boys and the girls get physical with each other. Like, who's booking this crap? And then just to have Seth and Becky win straight up clean, and then later on, Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans fucking attack? Like, how stupid is this? What was the damn point here? Oh, yippee, here comes the fucking walrus, Paul Heyman swaddling on down the fucking ramp. Why? So that way everybody gets visual confirmation that he's affiliated and associated with Raw? Who gives a crap? And we'll certainly want to, want to be associated with this crap this week. So what, he can sit there ladder ribs and repeat and gargle the same horse shit ass, boring ass, lame ass promo he said the last four fucking years? Or in this case, just sit there and either give a spoiler or not give a spoiler, and either way, it sounded fucking ridiculous. What was the point of this? Oh boy, a six man two out of three falls match! Yeah! Miz and Usos, Revival and Elias! What's the point of having Elias out there just ready to go running tail up the fucking ramp as quickly as he possibly can? And what the fuck's with all these elimination two out of three falls matches where we can't have any wrestling during the fucking commercial breaks? This is so ridiculous and so stupid and so perfectly reeks of damn Vince. Just why? And then with all of these damn tag matches, no wonder your alleged villains, your heels, can't get any fucking heat because they never get a chance to get any true fucking heat because you always have the baby faces going over because it's fucking stupid. What is the point of that? So big skippity skip whoopie woo! Rey Mysterio returns and a lot of people apparently didn't even realize that he was gone. But here he is. On the Go Home Show, before the Stream Rules pay-per-view, when he's not booked on it. So we're going to take a legend and throw him out there for a return, just so that way we can feed him to fucking Bobby Lashley. Why in the hell would you do this on a Go Home Show? Furthermore, even more importantly, you sat there last week and tried to fool the idiots into thinking that the shit that happened with Lashley and Strowman was goddamn real. Like, you have to be a moron to think that that caused real injuries. Like, we're still battling this in 2019 when it comes to professional wrestling. It's like, what the fuck is the point of even trying to speak after these ass clouds when it comes to wrestling any goddamn more? You're so goddamn naive, gullible, and stupid! They're suspending disbelief and then suspending common fucking sense! But then you sit here and have Lashley come out seven days later, no worse for the fucking wear, but Braun Strowman, the bigger dude, the fucking monster, is nowhere to be found. What the fuck was the point of this? Blink and you missed it, Cesaro. Squash, go away, Jose, just like that. Like, what's the point of this? 
so Cesaro can look big and bad as he heads into facing Aleister Black at Extreme Rules? Like, what the fuck? Like, there literally is no point to this match if it's going to go that quickly. I'm just saying. Your NXT Tag Champions, the Street Profits, because, of course, a black tag team in WWE's got to have a name like the fucking Street Profits. They couldn't be the fucking business school profits. They couldn't be the Harvard Yard profits because Vince doesn't associate that with something that's not pearly white. You get my fucking drift. But you're bringing up the street profits, your NXT tag team champions, if memory serves me correctly, just so that way they can be hyping up a fucking extreme world pay-per-view that they're not featured on. You're bringing these guys up and you don't clearly have anything ready for them. What's the point in that? Generally, to me, pregnancy angles in professional wrestling, with maybe a few exceptions, in general, for the most part, are stupid. Because they are a waste of time because there's ultimately no payoff for the fans. I mean, after all, not every angle could be Mae Young giving birth to a hand. There's a payoff there, damn it. But the vast majority of these pregnancy angles end up really just wasting everybody's time, which is so typical for WWE now, so it's perfectly suited. But you look at this Mike and Maria Canella shit. Are either one of them booked on the pay-per-view? Not to my understanding. So why the fuck are we doing this? Who thinks this is a good idea to go down this lame-ass soap opera stereotype bullshit of, hey, he went pickles and ice cream. You better go get it if you don't want me to eat these flowers. Like, who gives a shit? What's the payoff to this? None. You just want to make the dude look as stupid as fucking possible? You're trying to make her look better? Like, that's going to make her look better? So that way she can go drop out another fucking kid? Like, why would we care? Why should we care? And more so for the second week in a row, what the hell is the point to this angle? What was the point of having Bailey and Nikki Cross do live split-screen interviews? Did you set out to make them look as bad, dumb, hokey, and stupid as you possibly can? Because if that's the case, by God, mission accomplished. Otherwise, what was the point of that when they were going to have to wrestle in a beat-the-clock challenge later on in the night? Like, you don't sit there and look at Bailey, and you especially don't look at Nikki Cross and the way she's being packaged, and say to yourself, my God, they could really carry an interview segment on live fucking TV. What was the point of putting them out there to make them look like jackasses? The Viking Raiders squash the Jousting Justins in quick order. Now, seriously, who the fuck are the Viking Raiders? What are they about? And why should I care? And instead of just always going down this lazy type of path with guys like this, you know, build them up in the monsters, let's give them some depth. Let's give them some actual character. Let's give me something that will actually fucking interest me about them. And furthermore, the question is, because I legitimately don't know at this point, are they booked on the pay-per-view Sunday or not? If they are, then at least you're giving them camera time. If not, then what the fuck was the point of this squash match? So I gotta, I gotta ask. You're trying to establish AJ Styles as a heel. It's not really gonna work anyways. Whatever. Let's humor the WWE here for a moment. Okay. Let's just humor him. You're trying to get him over as a heel. You want to get Ricochet over as a babyface. Do you really think the best way of going about doing that is to have Ricochet first beat Gallows then beat Anderson to only then have AJ Styles and the club jump his ass. That's fucking stupid. It's just filling and killing time, and more importantly, killing off characters and their heat before they even really get a chance. Like, Ricochet is just another nickel dimer to me, but people seem to like him. So if that's the case, you want to do things that would accentuate that. Give people even more reason to get behind him. Having him beat Gallows and fucking Anderson to then only get jumped doesn't accomplish any of that. Why not just have AJ Styles in the club beat the shit out of him for day number one? Like, if you think about this from a logical standpoint, and I know this is Vince, and it's Heyman, and it's WWE, and it's professional wrestling today, so logic goes way, 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 way out the fucking window. But if you're ready to face this guy in six days at a pay-per-view for a title, wouldn't you want to maim him a little bit, injure him a little bit, ensure that he was less than 100%? Wouldn't 
Why would you want to take any chances with him building any momentum or confidence? Like, I mean, these are just the type of things that I think about, and I know I'm not the only one that thinks about him. But seriously, again, what was the point of doing this shit to have Ricochet beat two people to get beaten down? And then to sit there, instead of having AJ Styles lead a beat down immediately, do it later on. This is the type of shit that gets nobody over. Speaking of what's the damn point of this, you should be pumping up your pay-per-view that's coming up on the network Sunday. You shouldn't be sitting there pumping up some other worthless-ass indie fed that you've got in your fucking pockets as a gateway to NXT and Evolve, and the special that's going on Saturday night. Furthermore, you shouldn't be having your talents, some of who are both at the fucking Extreme Rules show on Sunday, talking about another company's damn show on Saturday. Does anybody else see how stupid this is? What's the point of doing this? Everybody knows they're fucking in bed with you any goddamn ways. Just doing it to troll AEW and everything else. So childish, so petty. Everybody get over that fucking sounds. You know what's not pointless, though? What's not pointless is everything involving the 24-7 title. This crap is legendary. It's fantastic. Easily the best thing about Monday Night Raw. Bar none. Period. It's perfectly suited for our truth He can be an idiot. He can be stupid. He can say crazy off-the-wall things. And it all works. And it's a great vehicle for a Drake Maverick to showcase himself and become kind of a Crash Holly type of personality, which is the best type of niche that he can have in WWE anyways. And that's okay because you remember back in the day, Crash Holly was over his shit. You don't have to be sitting there wrestling in the main event to be a star. Because a lot of times we know in modern WWE, you could be wrestling in the main event and you most certainly are not a star. Like, this shit is great. You incorporate it throughout the course of the night. And it feels like the random type of stuff you should get in professional wrestling. I don't want it to end anytime soon. And speaking about something else that has a point to it, Renee Michelle. And I'm not just talking about the points of the headlights. The points were on, baby! But my God, literally! Vince, Heyman, I implore you, don't fucking overthink this. You literally could just have her sitting there, her fine ass in that sexy ass body hugging white dress on TV for 10 minutes, just sitting there looking all types of goddess and sexy, and it'll be one of the highest rated segments of the night. My God, she is majestic. My God, she is gorgeous. My God, she deserves to have all types of white babies pounded into that pussy. Spud, Drake, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. We know you've consummated the marriage. But you really haven't consummated the marriage. You have married her. Now it is time to do your duty and end her career by putting babies in her. Now, maybe there is a point to me where I maybe feel like maybe the, the, the not consummating could be true because you have to wait for her to be touched by God. Ugh. And to get that seal of approval. Yeah, but that's just fantasizing. But like at that point in time, like, there's almost an irritating factor to Drake Maverick. Like, have you looked at Renee Michelle? The only thing you should be doing with that 24-7 title is figuring out all the ways you can defile it and come all the fuck over and make her squirt do whatever the hell. You sit there and tell Xavier was and Paige and Honey Beef Bro, I see your shit and I'll raise you a thousand bitches. Ah, yes. But that was just a small, small part of the overall picture of this show. Got to get back to the pointless. And what a surprise. It involves the main event in Shane McMahon and Roman Reigns. <laughs> Does that surprise anybody at this point? Like the whole thing throughout the course of the night of Shane and Drew looking for somebody to be Roman Reigns' tag team partner. And they're going to sit there and find somebody. And they offer Gary Garbutt. <laughs> they say, boy, that's funny. Because we're a team so still. $5,000 for this guy to wrestle. He's got to live it. It's funny. It's funny. The white guy giving the black man $5,000. He's acting like it's everything. And we call them butt. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> like, this is the type of shit we're dealing with at this point with this goddamn company. So then they have Roman's tag team partner come out. And lo and behold, surprise, surprise, the guy can do flips and he can do kicks, so he's basically like everybody else on the fucking roster who gives a shit. But, my thought being, this whole time this is going on, like, who gives a shit about the damn match? You've got Roman there, Taker's not going to be there, it's Shane, it's Drew, two on one. Why would you want to fuck 
came out before the pay-per-view. Again, this is not overthinking. This is just like basic logic here. Why wouldn't you want to yoke that dude up to disadvantage him for Sunday so that way when his tag team partner, the 50-something-year-old fucking Undertaker, comes limping down the damn ramp 10 minutes after his music hits, you have a clear and easy advantage, and you win. But that wasn't even the most pointless thing about this. What was the point of sitting there and having this be a vehicle for Cedric Alexander to make a turn of all damn random fucking people and have him unmask right before a pay-per-view that he's not going to fucking be on. What's the point in that? What's the point in not stomping out Roman immediately? And then worst of all, what the fuck is the point of Cedric Alexander and Roman Reigns eventually sitting there and yucking it up and cheesing like the Cheshire Cat in the direction of Shane and Drew when Cedric got pinned? The fuck are you smiling about, you jackass? You caught him off guard, surprised him. And still got hit by a Claymore kick and got beat. You got pinned. What the fuck are you celebrating? What the fuck are you laughing about? What the hell are you guys yuck yucking and smiling about? You didn't pull shit over anybody. Like this is how the damn go home show of Raw before the pay per view ended. With a cruiserweight that people don't fucking care about being unmasked for no goddamn reason when he's not being booked on the show as far as I fucking know. So that way, him and Roller can be left standing tall, yucking it up like they pulled over something on the team that won! The team that won! You know what? This is exactly why I need to be back watching Raw every single week. It's my pain for your pleasure. I watch... So you don't have to. Because by God, it's still the same shit. You laugh scratching your head, wondering what the hell they're thinking, and ultimately, what was the damn point? What was the damn point? It's ridiculous. She had another great reminder, though, of why OTR Central is not the wrestling show you want. But certainly, especially after shitty shows like Monday, just the wrestling show you need. Out of here.